Hey y'all, how you doing? My name is Steve Peterson. I'm the broker owner of Infinity Investments. I wanted to talk to you real quickly about a concept that I think is very important in today's market. It's the concept of return on investment versus return on equity. And doing this analysis will help you to make investment decisions, especially if you own property and you're trying to decide whether you should keep that property or if you should sell it and buy something else. So let's just go through some math real quick. First of all, return on investment. Let's look at a, a particular example as if you were to go out and purchase a fourplex. So let's just say you purchased a fourplex with $100,000 down, right? Now, that annual cash flow, which is the net cash flow after your net operating income comes in and pays your mortgage, your net cash flow is $10,000, right? So the calculation for return on investment is I take my $10,000, my cash flow, I divide it by the $100,000 that I put down, that equals 10%, 10% return on investment, right? Pretty good right now if you can get that in the Bay Area, but stick with me here. Now, you've owned the property for a couple of years, and especially in the Bay Area, if you've owned the property for a couple of years, usually that property goes up in value. Now, that property's net equity, the amount left over, it, when you look at the value, uh, all the debts on the property, the amount left over was called net equity. Now let's say the property grown in value, and so the net equity of the property is 300,000, right? So I wanna, in order to calculate my return on equity, I'm gonna take my annual cash flow, which is 10,000, same thing down there, 10,000. I'm gonna take my 10,000 and I'm gonna divide it by my equity. Not my investment, but my equity. Right, return on equity. So I take my 10,000 divided by 300,000, and that's 3.33%. Not as good as 10%. So if you're trying to figure out, do I hold this property, do I sell this property, this analysis will help, help you make that decision. Because if I said, what if I wanted to accelerate my cash flow? Well, I can do that by conducting a 1031 tax deferred exchange. Let's look at that. So if I do my 1031 exchange cash flow accelerate, acceleration example, here's what I might look to get. I conduct a 1031, that means I sell my property, I realize my $300,000 in equity. I've got that cash, it's gonna be in a qualified intermediary's account for a certain period of time. Then I'm gonna take that 300,000 and I'm gonna purchase an eight unit building. So I had a fourplex, I sold, exchanged to an eight unit building. That eight unit building now produces only 7.5% return. Remember in this example, my return was 10% because the market has gone up. Now it's only 7.5%. It's let, your returns are typically less when the market goes up. So some people say, well, why would I sell? Why would I do that? Check it out. I took $300,000, my equity, to buy this eight unit building. Now that's giving me 7.5% cash on cash. That's pretty achievable today. That would be $22,500 net. So even though I went down on my percentage from 10% to 7.5, what did I do? I went from making $10,000 a year to making $22,500. I just doubled my cash flow. And that's what you can do by conducting a 1031 exchange. Now, we're gonna be talking about this at our seminar on May 23rd. Click the link below to get more information. Come on out, network with us, and learn how you can accelerate your cash flow. Thank you very much.